Back in 2005, the Diatom label was born. Uh, and the motivation for Diatom was a strong desire to explore Chardonnay in a very skeletal, very transparent, very kind of unadulterated fashion, uh, which in a lot of ways is along the lines of Burr Clifton, yet I wanted to see what would happen if things were even more stark, more empty. Um, and so the name Diatom even really gave birth to um, not only the label, but really the mindset behind the wine. So a diatom is a plankton fossil. Um, it's the exoskeleton of plankton um, from which diatomaceous earth is mined. Uh, we have one of, if not the largest, pure mine of diatomaceous earth anywhere in the world, about a mile or two away uh, from us at the winery. And the white chalky hillsides um, in Lompoc and in Santa Rita Hills are really the, the life source, really, of, um, of a lot of the, the soil profiles here. Everything here is, is reliant upon the ocean, okay, from the wind, um, the soil, everything else. So much like the diatom fossils, I wanted something very skeletal as well, all by luxurious. Okay, so with diatom, the goal is to capture luxury in the most primary way possible. So frequently in the, um, with wines or anything in life, luxury begets luxury. Okay, so if you think about a beautiful lobster claw, sometimes the tendency would be, oh my gosh, I've got this beautiful lobster claw. I'll cook it sous vide with butter, with cream, foie, caviar, uni, gold leaf, whatever it is, New Year's Eve. Um, and that's fine. That's a totally appropriate journey. Diatom is divergent from that. It's starting with that same lobster claw, but in lieu of embellishment, it's restraint. Okay, it's sliced thin, yuzu, citrus, trans music, sushi bar. Okay, that's what diatom's about. So very, very luxurious, very decadent, ultimately, and very pristine, very precise, very linear. Also, capturing Chardonnay before it has an opportunity to become something else. Okay, I reflect sometimes on a wave right before it breaks. Or if you picture imagery of a whale coming up to the surface of the ocean right before the water breaks off the spine of the animal, that pent-up state, right, when you inhale before you exhale. I wanted a very cloistered, very kind of pent-up, very held-in voice of Chardonnay yet also one that, that offered a lot of experience um, and offered a lot of impact and power. And so that's what gave birth to Diatom um, 15 years ago. The primary bottling for Diatom is from a stunning old vineyard called Bar M, which is located right in the middle of the Los Alamos Valley, about 15 minutes away from Santa Rita Hills, which is my typical sandbox and habitat. What's com really compelling about the Los Alamos Valley is that in Santa Barbara County, we have three. We have the Santa Maria Valley to the north, the Santa Rita Hills to the south, and then the middle child, if you will, um, that's a little more anonymous, a little more under the radar, and equally cool and very impactful is the Los Alamos Valley. Um, it's a very, very important location um, for Jackson Family Wines as a whole. Um, providing a lot of beautiful fruit material um, for Grand Reserve and Vintners Reserve. This vineyard, um, planted about 25 years ago, is immaculate. It's beautiful. Sandy, sandy clay loam. And for this project, I work with one block and one clone um, from within Bar M. Um, and that's very important to us because a diatom in and of itself is a singular plankton fossil. So the provenance of this wine, for me, it's a priority, needs to be very singular as well. So one of our state holdings, and even though it's only one block because of the long open aperture of picking window here in Santa Barbara County, uh, we typically harvest the fruit out of this block five to six different times over about a three week period to layer the wine from the outside. Because once it gets to us at the winery, it's all raised the exact same. So that's the bar M. For diatom, as far as production protocol goes, very, very, very straightforward. The fruit comes in at night, pressed, cold fermented, super, super cold, no lees stirring, no mallow, early bottling, and that's it. So picture something like a, a raw oyster that's very dense, that's very fatty, that's very decadent, and, um, and just shucked with like salt water still in it, um, and then consumed right on the spot. That's the motivation behind diatom, is to capture that, that, luxur that luxury 
um, but to raise the wine in the most succinct, most deliberate, most kind of tightly wound way we know how. When selling and presenting diatom, I, I can't stress enough um, to not lead with commentaries such as, this is Greg Brewer's stainless steel Chardonnay. I think that's an oversimplification of what this wine is. And it, it puts a kind of predetermination in people's minds um, of what the wine could be or should be or might resemble. Um, in, in the world of stainless steel Chardonnay, um, the wines can be beautiful. Frequently, they're a little simple. Um, they're crisp, they're kind of porch pounding Hamptons. I'm on my yacht in the summertime at a clam bake, and that's fine. Uh, this, though, is not that. This is a massive Chardonnay. This is a very luxurious Chardonnay, and it should, sim it, it should be presented as such. Okay? So a lot of times, I, I, I always think about other industries in the world um, for motivation and for inspiration. And um, I, as far as uh, something to not necessarily articulate to a buyer, but something to have in the back of your mind is to reflect on the role of alternative dairy and the role that that currently plays in the landscape of the dairy case, right? Who would have thought that dairy could be penetrated or threatened? No one, certainly I didn't. And where was soy milk 15 years ago? It was next to the hemp cereal in some hippie grocery store that you couldn't see in the bottom corner of a rack. Now, soy, cashew, almond, coconut, every hybrid version, vanilla, unsweetened, et cetera, are front and center. They're packaged as if they, they were nor normal dairy milk. Um, the pricing, everything, they're seen that way, they're portrayed that way because they are that way. And that's why they've been able to be kind of front and center along with something more classic, if you will, being dairy. Similarly, in the role of wines raised this way, um, it's simply a, a complementary category toward, um, with barrel fermented Chardonnay, right? which is such a key part of our company culture um, within Jackson family. So here, simply in that case, you've got wine, barrel fermented Chardonnay. In the case of dairy, you've got plants, you've got cows, you've got dairy. Here, we've simply dropped out the cow, so to speak. We've simply dropped out the barrel, right? And so, but, but knowing that the result is still luxury, it's still beautiful, it's still powerful, it's still intense. Um, that's how I sometimes frame, you know, the kind of my mindset behind this wine when presenting it. <laughs>